Oh boy, disclaimer. People may think that becoming a horror fan is easy. All you gotta do is play a few spooky games, watch a few scary movies, and boom, you're a horror fan. Well, you're wrong. It's not that simple. Hell, it's hard to even know where to start sometimes. For starters, there are several subgenres, and there's also many different forms of horror media, and about a gazillion of each of those. Just look at all this! Well, thankfully birthdays are a thing because for my birthday this year I got this, the 100 Must See Horror Movie Scratch Poster. Now, being honest, I've seen the majority of these, but it got me thinking. Why not review every movie on this list one at a time? If these are indeed the must see horror movies, it would be a great way for me to introduce potential fans to the genre, at least as far as movies are concerned. And then I'll scratch them off as I go. I thought about it over a cup of tea and I decided to give it a go. So grab some snacks, turn out the lights, hide under the comfiest blanket you can find, and join me as I take a look at the 100 must see horror movies. I'll be honest, I hit a wall early in this series. Why? Because I didn't know where to start. Even when narrowing it down to 100 must-see movies, it's still a struggle. In the end, I gave up and asked my wife to pick one, so she picked Night of the Living Dead. Excellent choice. Night of the Living Dead was written, directed, photographed and edited by George A. Romero, a legend of the horror industry. Not only did it go on to spawn several sequels, it also had a huge impact on the world of horror. Before this movie was released, zombies were always seen as slaves who were hypnotised by voodoo witch doctors to do their evil bidding on sacred islands. Romero was heavily influenced by the 1954 novel I Am Legend, which was a book about a zombie apocalypse caused by a disease. Romero took that idea and tweaked it, so the zombies were recently dead people brought back to life. It's because of this movie that the zombies we see today in movies, TV shows, comic books and video games exist. This movie single-handedly revamped the zombie genre for generations to come. It even revamped the horror genre in full. Before this movie, horror movies always took place in obscure places, or had aliens invading, or scientific experiments going wrong. In Night of the Living Dead, the setting was very much the real world, and horror was brought to everyone's backyard. It has a legacy as long as the River Nile, and has influenced hundreds of zombie media over the years. It more than deserves its place on the poster, but is it a good movie, and would I recommend it to potential new horror fans looking to get into the genre? Let's take a look. Synopsis The movie takes place in western Pennsylvania, where a countrywide pandemic is happening. The recently dead are coming back to life with an unstoppable hunger for human flesh. What is causing the dead to rise? Well, one reason given in the movie is a strange radiation from a space probe that exploded in the Earth's atmosphere when returning from Venus. However, the scientists and government officials state that this is only theorised, and we never know for sure what causes it. Maybe the rent prices on coffins skyrocketed, I don't know. All we really find out is that a heavy blow or shot to the head kills them, as does burning them. Now despite being a zombie movie, the main focus of the plot is actually centred around the survival of seven people hiding out in a farmhouse. We have Barbara, Ben, Tom, Judy, Harry, Helen and little Karen. All seven characters have their own stories as to why they are there. Barbara was visiting her father's grave with her brother Johnny when they were attacked by a zombie. At least I think it's a zombie, it looks more like my granddad when he hasn't taken his medication. Johnny sadly didn't survive the altercation because he lightly bumped his head. Huh? Ben was at a local diner and saw roughly ten ghouls chasing after a gasoline truck. Harry and Helen are married and Karen is their daughter. They were out in their car when ghouls swarmed them and overturned the car, injuring Karen in the process. Tom and Judy are a teenage couple who were on their way to go swimming when the ghouls attacked. Ben is clearly the leader of the situation, maintaining a level head and a steady mind. Harry is a snivelling little weasel who would rather hide and let someone else die to save his own skin. Because of this, Ben and Harry do not get along, often clashing with one another when trying to decide what is the best action to take. Harry and his long-suffering wife Helen clearly have relationship issues. 
On the flip side, Tom and Judy are devoted to each other and we see some genuinely heartwarming interactions between the two. Meanwhile, Barbara, upset over losing her brother and traumatised over what's happening, enters a catatonic state. The movie's main question is, can they all group together to beat the threat, or will they in turn become each other's undoing? The Good First off, the characters are fantastic and each bring what they need to the table. It's nice to see the various different ways people would react in this situation. Ben is a badass who doesn't want to go down without a fight. Barbara acts perfectly acceptable for someone who's going through what she is. Tom and Judy portray the couple who stick together through everything, whilst Harry and Helen show that stressful situations can cause a rift between couples. Harry is a character I'd like to make special mention to. Sure, he's a snivelling dick, but you understand why he's a snivelling dick. His wife and child are with him, the latter of which is seriously her. I don't even know how I would react in that situation. The film does a great job in showing how people can react differently in times of need. I also love the setting. The farmhouse feels very claustrophobic and the vast empty wasteland around it makes the characters seem extremely isolated. The noises and performances of the zombies are also fantastic. The hissing sounds they make whilst eating is eerie as hell and the way they move is unsettling and builds tension. The acting is fantastic, with special mentions going to Dwayne Jones as Ben and Judith O'Day as Barbara. They really steal the show throughout. The ending is brilliant too. I'm not going to spoil it for those who haven't watched it, but let's just say it was a very ballsy ending to a horror film for the time, which was a nice change of pace to the norm. It was also very powerful and no one saw it coming. The Bad Ok, so the zombies may have sounded good, but god damn they sure as hell didn't look it. I know it's a very low budget movie, but damn, most of these are people just walking around slowly, like the first zombie. He just looks like a crazy old man. Sure, some of them have some slight skin effects on them, but nothing special about this world. Also, this film's sound and voice dubbing really does leave a lot to be desired sometimes. Just listen to this. <laughs> That's just awful. The overall. I love this movie. Like I said, Night of the Living Dead has a huge legacy and it's easy to see why. It changed so many rules in not just the zombie genre but the horror genre full stop. It managed to influence many different movies, comics, TV shows and video games over the years and is considered a timeless classic. But would I recommend it to potential new horror fans? Well, I can't believe I'm saying this, but no, I wouldn't. Sure, it's a great movie, but it's very much a product of its time. As a horror fan, I can watch and appreciate it for all the new stuff it did at the time, but non-horror fans would just see a black and white film with a slow pace and bad sound dubbing. Night of the Living Dead is a must-see for all horror fans, but for those who are still getting used to the genre, I wouldn't recommend it yet. So that's it for this review and this video. Do you agree or disagree with my thoughts? What are your thoughts on Night of the Living Dead? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.